If Aventurine wants to bring down the family, he'll have to create a big enough chance. After everything he's done so far, what is his goal?
A brilliant strategy. You'll lend me your strength. Your end approaches. Existence is unified. Oh. 
all will be swept away by the wind. Lend me your strength. Lend me your strength. Your end approaches. Eternal. To guard and defend. Crush them. Lend me your strength. Failed to send you. Savor it for me. What is your prescription? <laughs> Lend me your strength. Lend me your strength! To guard and defend! Crush them! The fight is set! Fail to send you! Savor it for me! Lend me your strength. Your end approaches. Lend me your strength. <laughs> All will be swept away by the wind. Failed to send you. Savor it for me. Eternal. Failed to send you. Savor it for me. Lend me your strength. Your end approaches. Existence is unity. All will be swept away by the wind. Too little. <laughs> Fail to send you. Savor it for me. Lend me your strength. To guard and defend. Crush them. Savor it for me. Lend me your strength. The fight is set. Your 
Lend me your strength. Take a rest. It's time for tea and cakes. Venturin said something that concerns me. He accused that Galaxy Ranger of killing Robin without any evidence whatsoever, but said nothing about her connection to that Memory Zone meme or why he was stalking you. It was a groundless accusation, which only serves to make him seem more suspicious. Maybe Aventurine's goal was never to gain our trust. Maybe he wanted to foster a feeling of enmity towards Acheron and make the situation more volatile. Two birds, one stone. However, I asked Don Hung back on the Express to confirm that story about the Annihilation Gang and the lost messages. It wasn't something that Aventurine made up out of thin air. You've met her many times now. What's your impression of Miss Acheron? That fits the stereotype of a galaxy ranger to a T. They're eccentric, unpredictable, and fond of being alone. No wonder she's a suspect. Whatever happens, please don't place all your trust in Aventurine. You cannot afford to be manipulated by him.
<laughs> I really love Clocky. too soon to bring it up but i feel like miss robin isn't actually dead but that she's still alive and well somewhere that everything's just some horrible prank because aren't we supposed to be inside a dream how could someone die in a beautiful dreamscape like this Shouldn't only good things happen here? Grand Theater. I just can't stop all these thoughts from flooding my head. Yeah, of course. At times like this, we're so lucky to have our crew. The family and the IPC. Everyone has their own plans going on. Everyone's still having a great time out there on the streets. Nobody knows what's happened. It's all so unreal. As if Firefly, Miss Robin, and us were all outsiders from another world. cool drink of soda to help me calm down. Uh, but then I'd be just like everyone else out on the streets. Uh. Looks like Aventurine doesn't need anything else. Let's turn our attention to the family's assignment for now. Himako, what do you think? Among our current clues, the two murders that she witnessed are the most directly connected. I suggest starting here. One thing I'm curious about is, if a person dies in a dream, what happens to them in real life? Seeing as we're at the family's behest, why not pop back out to reality and verify Miss Firefly's situation back at the hotel? Perhaps we could also make a few inquiries about her while out there. How about we split off into two groups? There are still some things worth focusing on inside the dreamscape. I'll investigate those and we can link up again later. Worth focusing on? Oh. No problem. 
I'll leave it to you then. Huh? Aw, I thought I'd finally get to see Himeko and Mr. Yang go out on a mission together. Oh well. Take care then, Mr. Yang. <laughs> I will. Keep in touch. Honored guest, uh, could you come out for a second? I'd be embarrassed too, getting stared at like that. Forgive me. Uh, my name is Welt Yang. I'm one of the crew members on the Astral Express. I believe you've met my colleagues. Welt. Is there something about my name? First, don't you want to know my name? I already do, Miss Acheron. You're a prominent figure in Panacone. What are they saying about me? Some claim that you're the real culprit behind these murders. That the Annihilation Gang's tragic fate at the banquet was a result of your blade. And that you're now attempting to unleash another bloodbath on Penicone. The Annihilation Gang? Ifrit of Everflame Mansion. Tragic fate. That duke turned his dying body to flames and sacrificed his life as a martyr. He was a determined and heroic pathstrider. Not even a villain should be disparaged like this. And what's more, there were plenty of suspects invited. Do they really think that a blade is more dangerous than that black hole you're wielding? Keen intuition. Not even the family managed to point out the truth behind this cane. So you must surely know, Miss Acheron, that peering into a black hole is not a wise move. As a potential threat, your knowledge of us has reached uncomfortable depths. Reveal your true identity and intentions. Otherwise, brace yourself for gravitational disintegration. That shouldn't be necessary. But if it makes the Nameless feel less defensive, I'll be happy to abide. Believe it or not, Galaxy Ranger, Acheron, those are the names I go by to this very day. My trip to Panacone is solely to fulfill an old, final request. I'm here for the Watchmaker's legacy. And that's it. I think I've been honest enough. Still unwilling to reveal your true identity? It's not that I don't want to. It's just that I can't. I've come so far, and I can't sum up all of that in just a few words. Everyone has their own unspeakable past. Secrets that they don't want to be revealed. And I won't be asking any more questions. Such as why the Astral Express is roaming around the cosmos with a Stellaron on board. <sighs> is she okay? That memo keeper didn't do anything, right? She's fine. Let's just stick with the topic. Gaining my trust depends on how much you're willing to reveal. I've run around many different Panacone dreamscapes just to try and find that legacy. And during this period, I came into contact with quite a few guests. 
In the process, I gradually came to realize the secret of Panacone may be closely related to the Trailblaze. That's why I've come to ask for your help. I don't have enough proof yet, but I'd like to speculate something. The source of all tragedy lies within the family. If you could trust me, we could find the proof to support this claim together. Mr. Yang, I think you've come to the same conclusion, haven't you? Let's leave it at that. For now, I'll choose to believe that you bear no hostility. Share your findings with me and me alone. I don't want vague conjecture to interfere with other people's judgments before we find solid proof. Mm-hmm. By the way, would you like something to drink? Before we go, how about two cups of wake the heck up? No. Four cups. Because the conversation coming up will last forever. I've been watching her closely for a while now, and the first invitation was in the banquet hall of the hotel. She just sat in one corner, keeping silent, chugging down a couple cups of wake the heck up. I told her it's a pungent, bitter beverage, not the taste of sweet dreams, only for people allergic to soul glad. And she said, Really? But I don't taste... Any difference at all between them? The guest rooms are charmingly minimalist. An aesthetic you share, Miss Acheron. It's a cinch, this music box. The invitation received by the Annihilation Gang. There are latent memories that linger on it yet. You see, memories of you are not yours alone. They travel in other people, other things. I know much, and I can predict even more. With some help, the dead can be made to speak. The Annihilation Gang, that band of desperados who all disappeared after meeting you. What exactly happened to them? Well, let me reveal all. Gradation, 12. Dreamscape, 12. Father, I dedicate this to you. Well done, Dubra. Wherever they go, shall be met by annihilation. There it is. It's hazy, but it's Ifrit's voice. The other one is probably his progeny. This is the residual memory from when the invitation was first delivered. They were abruptly interrupted. Then, what happened next is... They sought refuge in the land of sleep. Merely wishing for undisturbed rest, away from the storms. Children of the flame, this marks your rite of passage. She won't be necessary. I alone am enough. Shh. When have the on the path of destruction, feared death. The Everflame Mansion has set out on a journey. Those poor people, they have no idea what lies in wait ahead of them. Memory recovery is going well, but slowly. She'll be here soon, and time is short. 
There's nobody else here, so there's no need to be delicate. In fact, I think I'd better go all out. <gasps> what happened? The memory after that is blank. How is that possible? This music box fell into Acheron's hands, and she brought it to Penacony. That's a fact, and that's how it should have gone. But along the way... It's like it's been erased. Who's done this? Who are you? Who are you? It's... No. Is this not a memory? Oh, a memo keeper. Do you serve the Garden of Recollection? Or the Cremators? My name is Constance. A pleasure to meet you. We were supposed to meet at Pentagoni and spend it... <laughs> Unforgettable time together. But that seems unrealistic. Dahlia's not welcome on the banquet star, and I don't need a coming-of-age ceremony. And you... I know what you're looking for. Want her secret? I can give it to you, and then you can enjoy the banquet for me. I wish you unforgettable memories. Oh. Hmm. A phone. Wanna listen in? A few days ago, the IPC made an announcement. Under the watchful guidance of the Marketing Development Department and in accordance with the Interstellar Peace Charter, the independent Sigonian sovereignty has hereby been established and shall take a legislative seat at the Interstellar Congress. The formation of the Sigonian sovereignty is of great historical significance to the Sigonia system. This move puts an end to the planet's long and bloody history, turning the sensational Kataka Abjin extinction event into a distant memory. Sigonia IV is located in an unclaimed zone at the intersection of the Denise, Pruthian, and Dorneau star clusters. The planet's surface environment is known for being extremely harsh, constantly faced with the threat of impact from small-scale celestial objects. This is why very few intelligent species have made this planet their home dividing themselves into several tribes to eke out nomad lifestyles as they struggle to survive the arid desert wilderness. They have developed their own folk beliefs that are independent of the Eon belief system. Sigonia. Sigonia. Ravenous eye of the storm, spurned by all the gods. Land of rock, but not water. Lightning, but not rain. Blood, but not tears. You beat us with your falling stars. You lash us with wind and storm. You chew us up with the cracked earth. You promised us a land of honey, 
yet yoked us beneath a sword of bitterness. Oh, Gyathra Triclops, if thou can hear me, please open up thy three eyes and gaze upon this child. When you took his father, my child was still sleeping in my belly. And where my husband went, I too soon must go. I don't ask for a peaceful death. Just for you to tell me, does the baby swaddled sweetly asleep? Does he dream of his mother's heartbeat and the sound of falling rain? Please tell me whether this life is all just a fleeting dream. Otherwise, why would this child be born to face impending death? Mommy! 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 The rain! It's raining! Raining? <gasps> raining! <laughs> it is raining! It's true! Those outworlders weren't lying to us. They really did summon the rain. Mommy, we can leave here. We can go back home. Triclops, <laughs> you came. <laughs> Do you hear that? <gasps> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Darling, listen. This is the sound of rain. <laughs> On the day you were born, the sky also sent down a gift like this from Gayathra. <laughs> Such a lucky child. Such a blessed child. Just like your name. A gift from them to Avgen. <gasps> My boy. May the goddess Gayathra close her eyes three times. Keep your blood eternally pulsing. Let your journey be forever peaceful. And your schemes forever concealed. Wake up, gambler. <laughs> oh, heavens. <laughs> I must have drunk too much Soul Glad. Uh, didn't expect you to be back so soon. How is it? Find anything? Just as you guessed. Nobody outside knows about Robin's death. There aren't even baseless conspiracy theories. They are still streaming the rehearsal for her ceremony, using a stand-in, I guess. <laughs> they must be dreaming. Of course. <laughs> Who could imagine that death would actually descend upon the idyllic dream created by the family? <laughs> Let alone that the victim would be the female lead of the Charmony Festival. To be honest with you, I didn't believe it. I even tested it a few times myself. 
until I discovered that I couldn't actually die. <laughs> Whenever there's any danger, I'm forced awake by the dream pool and it's all as if everything were just a nightmare. And that's why I'm convinced that there are a few big secrets lurking behind the scenes. Then you must have heard about the Memory Zone meme. When I graciously deigned to establish connections with the Oak family on your behalf, they were quite in a pitiful state of disarray. Besides Robin, there was... another body. I don't know the exact details, just that it was... a stowaway. Two murder cases? <laughs> I told you something seemed off about the Nameless. Oh, she must have come across the other one. <laughs> this murderer is a psycho. But I have to admit, the case should be easy to crack. We can leverage the family's malfeasance and let the IPC use this as a reason to intervene. It's just that their trickery runs deeper than I thought. Robin's stand-in was all ready to go. These two murders are definitely getting hushed up. What should we do? Let me think. It's too rare an opportunity to miss out on, so I gotta be careful. Incredible gambler. Have you already exhausted your limited repertoire of tricks so soon? Oh, there are plenty of chips, but it'd be best to choose carefully. The most straightforward has to be Robin. Remember? That masked fool once told me to find a mute as a friend. Robin is what she calls the mute. She has lost her voice, and while most people can't pick up on it, you and I cannot mistake that sound. Not produced by any voice box, but rather by the resonance of the harmony. If that girl hadn't gone hoarse from singing practice, there'd only be one possibility. Something was up with the family. Or Robin herself. To get to the bottom of this, I tried every way I could to meet her. But she died. Right before my very eyes. A complete and utter loss. Incidentally, it seems to have resulted in your rather undignified arrival on the interrogation stand. There were eyewitnesses at the scene, and the family, in their graciousness, has tentatively accepted your alibi. However, for the foreseeable future, you shall, regrettably, find yourself under the vigilant watch of the Hounds. Well, things aren't looking too optimistic, Doctor. I'm starting to break out in a cold sweat. D do you reckon... There's still any chance of a comeback, given how things are. A probability? Yes, it exists, but it verges on the infinitesimal. To phrase it in a matter more befitting the vernacular of Penacony, you're dreaming. But if you simply can't control yourself and want to try your hand, then there just so happens to be a suitable candidate. That man wants to see you again. Who? No. Sunday. <sighs> Is this a public hearing or a private trial? If it were the former, it would hardly befit my stature to stoop to the role of a mere messenger. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> well, that's great. It's all great. You see, the dead can't talk. But the living can. Ratio, I'm convinced now that there must be something wrong inside the family. Oh, <laughs> just you wait and see. That man's sister has died. He can't sit on his hands. Well, without any further ado, let's set off. Lead the way. The show is about to begin. We're here. 
The Dewlight Pavilion is the Oak family's fortress and a place where heads of the families meet to discuss great plans for Panacone. A fortress? <laughs> well, I like this metaphor. I dealt with the warlords of the Amanica star system not long ago, and their synchronized orbital manner wasn't this heavily guarded. This mansion nominally belongs to Sunday, and is very befitting of its owner. Without his express invitation, the likes of ordinary guests would never grace these grounds in their lifetimes. Look around while you still have this moment of freedom. Hey, Doc. Whose side are you on anyway? Who's to say I won't sell you out? <laughs> we'll see. When we meet the authoritarian master of the Oak family, I'll pry an answer out of him. Follow me and I'll bring you to his parlor. Hold your tongue and let me deal with the members of the family. Hmm. 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 